Now that we've cleaned our weapon, it's time to lubricate it. You may notice before moving on to this step, I've gone ahead and cleared off my table a little bit and got rid, and, rid of things that I don't really need right now. Uh, I've also taken off my eye protection uh, because I'm, I'm not going to be spraying a lot of aerosols around here. If I was still going to use the, uh, the spray break free, I may choose to keep them on, uh, but I'm not. So I've just got what I, what I need here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, the RAND CLP and a rag, and I'm going to go ahead and begin. So what I like to do is, uh, after I, I do a good cleaning, uh, I do like to have it uh, good and wet. Uh, and I'll, I'll let it sit and then wipe it down a little bit afterwards. Uh, you know, there, there can be too much of a good thing, uh, but it, it really is kind of true that it's, it's very difficult to over-lubricate an M4. Uh, you can get excessive, but you know, most you're, you're really going to get is a really smoky first shot. Uh, it might sting your eyes a little bit, uh, unless you're going to go ahead and fill up your uh, gas tube. Uh, with oil and try to fire it. Uh, nothing catastrophic is really going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my lower receiver. Now, remember, this is a protectant too. So what I like to do first, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some oil down here in the uh, working parts where the springs are. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting on a, a healthy coat. And now, very close attention to this, I'm going to go ahead and capture the hammer with my thumb, rotate the selector lever to semi, and I'm going to squeeze the trigger. And I'm going to just allow it to move a little bit, I'm just trying to get the oil to work in. And then I'm going to set it back down, place it on safe, and ensure it's fully seated. Uh, you know, I've, I've got a match trigger on this, it's quite a bit lighter, I really don't want it smacking into the metal here on its own. And I'm just taking my gloves and kind of working some oil down in here into the rec recesses. I am going to go ahead and uh, lube up the inside of my magazine well. And I'm really just using my uh, finger to go ahead and uh, rub it. Then on the magazine uh, release button, I'm going to place some oil here at the seam. And I'm just going to let it work down in there. Same thing here on the other side. I'm going to get some oil. And yes, I, I am going thick here. Same thing here on the magazine catch, or the bolt catch. I'm going to let that work down in there. I'm just doing this until it's nice and smooth. And I'm just kind of rubbing it around. And it is really slathering the uh, the outside of the weapon, but I'm just going to take a rag and wipe it down afterwards. Remember, this uh, uh, RAND CLP uh, is designed to kind of make a, a nice slick barrier in all of the microscopic 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 pores uh, of the weapon. Same thing here. I'm going to insert it down the buffer tube. I'm just pushing the rag down in here to uh, kind of get some slack out. Now I'm just going to wipe it down a little bit. I'm just taking off the excess. And I do find uh, after I put it together uh, and throw it in my gun safe at night, because you should always properly store your weapons, uh, I'll put a towel underneath it or wrap it around because some of this will, uh, will seep through and then I'll wipe it down again in the morning. This is just giving me a really good protective coating. Now since I'm on the lower receiver, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue with the lower receiver. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the buffer, the buffer spring, and I'm going to put a little bit of lube, and I'm just rubbing it, rubbing it around with these rubber gloves. That's why it's nice to have a nice set of rubber gloves, because you can just kind of massage the lube in here, place it back in. It kind of helps me spread it around the parts. Now, it's not necessary to, to push down the spring. You, you can just press it in with your thumb and it'll capture. I am going to go ahead and action that pin a little bit just to make sure there's no resistance. It feels good. So, there, if I felt some resistance on the retaining pin, I may go ahead and uh, give it a little bit more lube. That, that works fine. Now, 
before I go ahead and put my plastic Magpul buttstock back on, I'm just going to give the uh, tube a little bit. There we go. A little wipe down. I'm going to place this on. If you've got these, these, these can be a little bit of a pain to uh, put on. Uh, you've just got to use the proper technique. There we go. All right, so now I'm, I'm done with this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this off to the side. Now I'm going to move on to my upper receiver. Same thing here. I've still got some oil on my gloves, so I'm just going to kind of massage it onto the barrel. And I'm going to get some here on the, the outer portion of the upper receiver. Uh, you'll find when you're using uh, solvents that uh, you know, the metal can get uh, quite a bit dry. I'm pressing down the ball detent here that's, uh, that keeps the uh, dust cover closed. Just making sure that's nice and smooth. Click that closed. And I'm just getting a, a good spread of oil here on the outside of the weapon. There we go. Same thing with my sights. There we go. Now we're looking good. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of oil here where the charging handle is going to go. I'm going to take the charging handle. I'm going to place a little bit of oil here and on the sides, top, and bottom. And again, I'm just kind of working it in here. What I'm looking for is it to, to, to feel nice and smooth. If you're using some lighter competition oil for a competition shoot, which I, I don't shoot competitions, uh, you may want to go a little bit lighter. Uh, but with, with this oil, uh, I'm trying to get it to soak into the pores of the metal. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the bolt carrier. Same thing, I've still got uh, quite a bit of oil here on my gloves, so I'm going to go ahead and massage the outer portion of the uh, the bolt. There we go, get some good oil in there. There we go, it's getting a good protective coating. And I'm just going to do a quick couple drops inside. I'm not going to put any oil into the gas key. Uh, gas parts need to stay dry, that's common on most all weapons platforms you're going to use. Now moving on to the bolt. My JP bolt has a really nice uh, coating on it that uh, makes it really nice and slick, so I don't have to get too crazy with this. Uh, I do want to get a little bit of oil here on the uh, bolt face where the ejector is, that little plunger there. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, press down on it to make sure it works in there. There we go. I want that to be nice and slick. Move that out of the way. Now, we're going to move on to the extractor. Same thing. Just going to work that in there. Oop, there we go. Now, got my retainer pin. Now remember, this is just like before. I'm going to go ahead and place it in, and I'm going to look at these holes to make sure they line up. And then I'm going to press down over where that spring is to overcome the tension until it lines up. Then I'm just going to place this pin into the hole. And if you need to, just kind of wiggle your thumb a little bit. Just kind of pulse it up and down, and there it uh, goes right in. Easy. Now, the way this goes in, if you lay it in front of you so that the a uh, portion where the bolt comes in is facing away, and the uh, gas key is facing away from you. Think of how your weapon is. The ejection port is on the right side, correct? So, we want the extractor facing off to the right. It'll be in line, usually with the dished out portion, like uh, on my bolt. You'll also notice when I hold it this way, this hole is facing vertical, and it lines up with the cutout portions on my bolt carrier. So I go ahead and press the, oh, a note about these uh, gas rings. Uh, there's a lot of myths about here about how these need to be staggered. These work just like the pistons uh, on your, piston rings on your engine. These gaps are not present when you place them in. They compress and seal. So you really don't have to worry about spacing these out. Uh, some people get emotional about this. I, I know, I, I was in the, the regular army before I went over to special ops. And, uh, you know, you were always told, always space out your gas rings. i tell you, you don't need to. If you talk to most armors, they're going to tell you the same thing. So, we go ahead and place it in. 
and I'm going to give it a slight rotation there so that that hole lines up with a portion of the dished out area on my bolt carrier that's just off to the left of my uh, gas key. And then I'm going to go ahead and place in this nut so that the uh, rectangular portion is in line with the length of the bolt carrier. And it should just drop right in. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and extend the bolt and I'm going to turn that rectangular portion 90 degrees. Okay, it's very important. Your, your firing pin will not go in unless you turn that so it's 90 degrees. This needs to be extended. Now, notice how I'm holding uh, my bolt carrier. I'm going to cover these dished out areas. Okay, I can get a little bit of oil on this if I want because my gloves are nice and oily. Now I'm just going to drop this in and give it a shake and then just a quick tap. That ensures that it's fully seated. You always want to make sure your firing pin is fully seated because it is possible to go ahead and place in your firing pin retainer pin uh, without it fully seated. And that can damage it. Now, most of your bolts are going to have a dished out area where the retainer pin goes and a non-dished out area like mine does. I want to make sure I insert this from the dished out area in and insert it. Now I'm just going to give it a check here. I'm just kind of smacking it and pulling it out uh, just to make sure it, it sounds nice and smooth. And it does, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my upper receiver and all I'm going to do is make sure that the bolt is extended. This is very important. I'm going to place it on the charging handle and then just set it in. Now, with a little bit of light pressure, I'm just going to press it in and let it seat all the way forward, just like that. Charging handle should be fully locked and the bolt should be locked into position. There, now I'm done with that. Now, you may have heard me say uh, uh, about this part called the uh, Accu Wedge. Uh, this is just a, a nice little uh, rubber piece uh, that fits into the back portion of your uh, lower receiver and really takes out a lot of the play between your upper and lower receiver. If you've got one of those off-the-shelf models uh, where you've got a lot of play where you can kind of take the upper and lower receiver and wiggle it, this will help take out a lot of that play and give you a bit more consistency. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that just like that, nice and easy. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take my weapon and lay it just like this. Again, if you have uh, fixed iron sights that don't fold in, uh, make sure you protect those. Barrels to my left, bolts to my right, just like this, facing up. Now, I can go ahead and uh, take my lower receiver and place it directly on my upper receiver. Because I've placed it this way, the pins are facing towards me. That means I can use my thumbs to press them in. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hand to press forward and down on the upper portion where the magazine well is. And then this pin should slide right in. There we go. And then I'm going to move to the rear pin and use this as kind of a, a hinge point, press down and seat it in. Uh, you shouldn't have to bang these pins in or hammer them. You can damage them. All right, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give kind of a little final wipe down here to remove any, any excessive oil from the, the healthy coating that I've placed on here. There we go. And then I'm just going to cycle the action a few times. It should feel smooth. I shouldn't hear any scratching or grinding. There we go. That's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and take off these gloves because there's a lot of oil on them. And let's have a quick talk about the optics. There's one cleaning device that I use uh, excessively on uh, my optics. And that's just uh, your regular uh, Oakley's uh, wipe or your sunglasses wipe. Uh, this should be standard kit on any of your uniforms, any of your range gear. Uh, keep one on your butt stock. Uh, these are really indispensable, a good microfiber uh, cloth that I can use to go ahead and uh, clean off all of my glass. Just be careful you don't get any oil on these. 
Uh, you could use uh, actual camera lens kits or Q-tips, uh, whatever, whatever you want. I'm just going to give all of my lenses here a good cleaning. It's a good time to inspect some of your contacts just to make sure there's no corrosion. They look good. Uh, since we've cleaned, it's also a good time to test your batteries. A battery tester is a, a great part of your kit to have. Uh, you know, if you don't have the money to just keep throwing in new batteries uh, every other day, uh, just go ahead and take them out and, uh, you know, check them. Uh, it's, it's always a good idea to avoid storing uh, your, your weapons with batteries in them for long periods of time. Uh, but if you're like me and you also keep these weapons in a safe for home defense, you are going to have batteries in them. So if you do have uh, batteries and, and they're stored, it's good to uh, periodically remove them and clean out those battery compartments and rotate the battery so you don't get corrosion built up. So now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, place my optics back on my rifle because I'm, I'm done using solvents at this point. There we go. Now we've uh, taken apart our weapon, we've uh, cleaned it, we've lubed our weapon, and we've placed it back together. Now it's time for us to go ahead and move on to a functions check. Conducting a functions check is a useful way to check for any possible problems with our weapon. The important aspect of this is to make sure you test each of the functions of the weapon. You may choose to do these tasks in a different order or to alter them slightly based off your requirements. The use of dummy rounds is also very helpful. I like to use single piece polymers. Uh, Magpul makes some decent ones, although I, I wish these were in bright orange. These are easy to lose on the range. First, we're going to check the mag check without uh, a magazine and dummy rounds. This will help narrow down possible causes for the, the troubleshooting should any issues arise. So, the first thing we want to do is make sure that the weapon's on safe. Like I said, it's always a good habit to constantly clear your weapon. Now, the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and check for the function of safe. So I have the selector lever in safe. What I'm going to do is making sure it's in a safe direction. I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger. The weapon should not fire. If your uh, hammer falls while the weapon's on safe, it's pretty dangerous. You need to discontinue use and go ahead and take it to a qualified armor. Then I'm going to go ahead and rotate the selector lever from safe to semi, and I'm going to pull the trigger and hold it to the rear. It's very important. The hammer should fall. Now, I'm going to reach up and charge the weapon. Now, I'm going to slowly release the trigger until I hear the metallic click, and then re-squeeze. What I'm checking for there is the disconnector. I'm ensuring that the weapon will only fire on semi. If I didn't hear a disconnector or the hammer fall again, uh, I have a slipped sear, and now my weapon will fire on full auto, which may be undesirable, maybe, on semi. Now, if you have an automatic setting because you filed a tax stamp on your weapon and you have an automatic weapon, follow your manufacturer's regulations. Now, what I'm going to do now is attempt to rotate it onto safe. It shouldn't go to safe. Charge the weapon again. Place it on safe. And now I'm done with that portion of the functions check. Now, I would like to go ahead and check uh, my magazines. So I'm going to go ahead and take two dummy rounds and place them in. It's very important that we're only using dummy rounds. At no time have I introduced live ammunition uh, to my working area whatsoever. So I've loaded them in. I'm going to go ahead and uh, place the weapon back in my hands and I'm just going to choose to use the sling at this point. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this magazine and I'm going to place it into the magazine well. And I'm going to push it in and pull it down ensuring that it's in a locked position. Then I'm going to go ahead and lock the bolt to the rear, and I'm going to release the bolt using the bolt release, and observe for it feeding. Slap the forward assist if necessary. Close the dust cover. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this magazine, and I'm going to go ahead and clear the weapon. There we go. 
So what I've done first is I've gone ahead and checked the safe feature of the weapon. I've checked the fire feature of the weapon. I've ensured that the disconnector engages. I've ensured that all the portions of my selector group are in working condition. I've also checked to make sure that my magazine locks into my weapon and stays locked. I've made sure that the magazine drops clean when I go ahead and uh, press the magazine release. And I've also checked for uh, reasonable feeding that uh, it's going to go ahead and uh, seat and extract a dummy round. Notice I didn't attempt to catch that dummy round, I just noted where it falls. And after we're done shooting this scene, I'll go ahead and pick it up. Now, go ahead and practice this. You should practice your assembly, disassembly, clearing and functions check just like before until you can do it consistently, reliably, and without any error. Now go ahead and practice yourself. <laughs>